So the first reason that membrane potential exists is because the plasma membrane is able to create compartmentalization. So this allows us to have different concentrations of ions or charged particles on either side of the membrane. The inside environment of the cell is different than the extracellular environment. To plug in a familiar term from the last unit, we could say that a concentration gradient exists for ions. Now there are a lot of biologically important ions, but the four big ones are listed in this table. Potassium, sodium, chloride, and calcium. In this unit, actually, the top three are potassium, sodium, and chloride. They're particularly important for muscle and for neurons. Now, even though I said that this is a conceptual unit, the information that's on this slide is one of the very few things that you're just going to have to flat out memorize in order to move forward with everything else. I really need you to understand the relative concentrations of ions that are in this table, because if you don't, then you really won't be able to do much else. Now, when I teach membrane potential, I always try to do it in two ways, quantitatively and conceptually. So for people that like numbers, the good news is that there's a formula for all of this, and membrane potential can be calculated with a lot of precision. You're gonna to wanna to focus on the values that are in this table. Potassium is at a concentration of about 100 millimolar inside the cell and five millimolar in the interstitial fluid. So therefore, potassium has a relatively higher concentration inside the cell. Sodium is the opposite, it has a concentration of about 100 millimolar in the interstitial fluid and only about 10 millimolar in the cytosol. So its concentration is relatively higher outside the cell. Chloride's pretty similar to sodium, except that its extracellular concentration is about 105 millimolar. And if you take a look down at the bottom, you can also see that for calcium, there's a huge concentration gradient. It's also relatively higher outside. People that don't like numbers, you can think about the cell conceptually as being a little bit like a salty banana. Just kidding, but um, we will take a closer look at the conceptual representation in one of our live classes. Now, in addition to creating unequal concentrations of ions, we also know that the membrane can have different permeability to different types of ions. So potassium can have a different permeability than sodium, and sodium can have a different permeability than chloride. When we use the term permeability in our course, we're essentially thinking about whether ion channels are open or whether they're closed. And so this is where all of those different gating mechanisms that we talked about in the membrane transport unit are really gonna start to come back to haunt us a little bit. When channels are open and we increase the permeability, we allow ions to move down their concentration gradients from high to low.